Imagine uprooting your life and moving almost 5,000 miles away with the one you love, only to realize that the one you love may be making love to someone else. Hmm. On today's case, Ms. West says Mr. Ellis's emotional indifference, lack of boundaries with his female clients, and his very suspicious behavior have landed them here in my courtroom. Can this outdoorsy couple triumph over their mountain of issues? Or is it time for one of them to take a hike? Let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of West versus Ellis. Thank you very much. Good morning, Ms. West, Mr. Ellis. Ms. West, you're here today because you say you and your fiancé have a mountain of issues you need to resolve. You believe Mr. Ellis is not taking your relationship seriously, refuses to spend quality time with you, and is likely cheating on you with his clients. You say that if Mr. Ellis can't put your mind at ease about these entanglements, this engagement is off. Yes, Your Honor. You, you lived together when you were in Hawaii? Yes. And so you all knew each other's patterns and uh, how you approach things? Yes. Why'd you actually move to Georgia? We moved to Georgia because we wanted to come here to pursue our music so that he can do more nature hikes. And also, it's just at least more affordable here than Hawaii. Walk me through what the real issues are. We can start when we first moved here. I signed us up for a plant-based cooking course. It was a four-course, $200 class. He knows about this three weeks in advance, so I gave him plenty of time to figure it out. So I get there, he doesn't come, he doesn't show. They won't even let me in because they're saying that they can't take us in unless we're a couple together. So I get home, about an hour into the class, he calls me and he asks, is, you know, is, is it still going? Can I meet you there? And I'm like, no, I'm already at home. What happened? I disagree. She signs me up for things. And my new job takes a lot of my time. Um, I am building up clientele at the moment. And just to let you know, I'm a hiking uh, guide. I help people connect with their inner self through the medium of nature. Okay, Mr. Ellis, because you know I understand work obligations. But I'm going to suggest to you um, that the kind of job you have is the way you describe it, is you keep your own calendar. I have to imagine you're not going and punching anybody else's clock, correct? Yes, Your Honor. That is my responsibility, Your Honor. Something that I have started doing, and it has worked for me, is I plug all the other aspects of my life into that same calendar because I treat everything like it's an appointment. But you know what? The things that include my husband and my children, those things are marked in a different color because guess what? They are. Let me see if you know what I'm thinking. They are my what? Priority. Oh, yes. So, those times don't get changed for folk unless I'm going to the hospital with somebody. And then usually my husband's gonna meet me there because he knows that it's serious enough that I would change a priority for my family. I know my mind can be a little bit out there. Um, there's a chance I forgot, but I don't really recall. She just signs me up to do things that I'm not ready for. Okay, I wanna be real clear on the facts. She signed you up for something that you agreed to do. She signs me up for a lot of things where in the moment maybe I say yes, but I don't recall that particular moment. Oh, so you don't put things as a priority. I'm trying to adjust, and there's just so much going on that you're right, I do need to pre prioritize, but for this instance, it... Mr. Ellis, I'm not telling you you need to prioritize. You should be telling yourself that. Because, Ms. West, what I don't want to do is try to make something a priority for him that he does not make a priority. Never make somebody your number one when they consistently treat you like their number two. The fact that he's saying that it wasn't a priority for him, I just... I don't believe that. I just feel that something else came up that he may piqued his interest even more. And... That's called... He made something else a priority. Yeah. But I also understand that one of the big issues going on in your relationship is you told Mr. Ellis early on in the relationship that you were not the mothering type. Am I correct? I feel that there are so many children already here in the world that I'm open to adopting. So you're open to children, you just don't want to have a baby. Correct. I understand, Mr. Ellis, if that's a priority for you. Um, how did you all resolve this? Because you've been together so long, it clearly 
Um, you've had this conversation before. Yes, Your Honor. Family is really important to me, and she knows that. Um, she never really gave me a definite hard no, but I've always accepted that there's a chance maybe she'd want to, maybe if I clean up my act or made her a priority and made that intent known that I do want kids in my future. We discuss it, but it's a sensitive topic for her. Yeah, and I feel like that should be up to me. If, you know, if I want to talk about it, I should be the one bringing forth that conversation. What actually happens in your home, since clearly there's a miscommunication? Well, we love to read books. That's something that we've always done together. And one day I came home and there was a book on my bed with a bow on it. Take the bow off and it's a book about preparing your body for pregnancy. And I immediately just felt pressure because I feel like he's not respecting my boundaries. Your Honor, I felt this was the appropriate book for us to learn together. Just because you're reading about it doesn't mean you agreed or signed up for anything. So now, Ms. West, I'm going to be devil's advocate for a minute. If Mr. Ellis is holding out hope for a family with you, I can see him wanting to discuss with you um, what that would mean for the person who would have to carry the child. Uh, that might have been a conversation starter rather than um, a pressure point. Is there a possibility that that was something that he was occurring? We're just not in that place mm -hmm. to even have that type of conversation right now. There is a lot of communication mm -hmm. issues. There's been some allegations about him cheating. Really? Um, I read a text. It said, Law New Phone. It said? LAU New Phone. And so I read the text, and there was just a lot of text about um, a lot of stuff that I felt was inappropriate, but specifically there were eggplant emojis and cucumber emojis. When I went through his phone, I saw that he was te texting this number again, saying that he was going to take her to his hidden place. Now, his hidden place is our, is our place. So I let him leave. I got my hiking clothes on. I hiked right behind him. I kept my distance. And the whole time I'm hiking, all I could see is them having sex in our hidden place. So, Mr. Ellis, do you have some explaining to do? Yes, she's overreacting to the whole thing. She wants to talk about priorities and boundaries when she's going through my phone to read personal texts that I have with my clients. What was disrespectful about it? I'm not the type of person to go through a phone, but boundaries being crossed. And what really stood out was the emojis because I felt like those are the freaky ones. Those mm -hmm. represent... Honor, some sexual I even, part. I didn't even respond to those texts. I left it alone. What's her deal? Why would she send you cucumber and eggplant emojis? She has a bit of sense of humor, but I didn't feel it That was ain't funny. Really Did he respond at all to the text when you were going through it? He didn't respond to the text, but a few days later, I saw a text. So he was getting out of bed. He didn't have any clients this day. He was getting out of bed, and he's like, oh, I'm going on a hike with my friend all of a sudden. And I didn't know anything about it, so I felt suspicious. He got in the shower, and then I went through his phone again. When I went through his phone, I saw that he was te texting this number again, saying that he was going to take her to his hidden place. Now, his hidden place is our, is our place. It's a sacred place that we hike, and it's got a beautiful view, and no one ever goes there. So I let him leave. Right after he left, I got my hiking clothes on, and I left. I let him hike. I hiked right behind him. I kept my distance. The whole time I'm hiking, all I could see is them having sex cool. in our hidden place. So once I get to the top of the mountain, it's him and his client there. Are you saying the him having sex in your sacred place was in your mind's eye, or did you actually see it? I, I was envisioning this. Because, see, there's mind. a big difference. Yeah. Because I, I just almost had literally another cardiovascular incident when you said all I could see was them having sex in my sacred... in our sacred place. Didn't you think that? I thought the same thing. Because you saw I was about to go... Wait, okay. <laughs> now... Well, because that's our hidden place. And why would he take someone to our sacred place? That's anybody sacred. Anybody can go there. It's open to the public. Yeah, it's our hidden place, but a lot of where we hike, we're trying to figure out where we're going. Have you stepped outside of your relationship? You know this is the place to clear the air so that we don't have to uh, beat around the bush. No, ma'am. I was faithful to her. So do me a favor. 
Tell Miss West that. I love you. I didn't do anything with any of my clients out there at any time since we've been here. When your man looks at you and says, this is who I am and you need to believe me, you have no relationship if you can't look him in the face and say, I believe you. You just don't. Because the number one tenet in a relationship is trust. You absolutely know that this person is your person. And you give them the benefit of the doubt first. So from what I'm hearing, I haven't heard you say that he's shown himself to be untrustworthy. You've clearly shown him to be unreliable. So why would you jump to the trust issue? There's just been so many things that have happened since we've been here. For instance, just the way that he's behaving has changed. What do you mean, the way he's behaving? He normally, when he's at work, he's sweaty, he's getting dirty out in nature. And we've been out in nature getting dirty together. So I'm, I'm used to that. He comes home and he gives me a big hug, a big kiss, and he goes to take a shower. Lately, since we've been here, he has been coming in, going straight to the shower. I don't even get a, a kiss or a hug. Sometimes he doesn't even try to say hi because he wants to run and go to the shower. So to me, you know, I know what we do, what we've done out in nature together. So I, I'm envisioning him doing that with some of his clients. One day in particular, he came in and I was waiting at the door for him. I gave him a big hug and a kiss. And I know what his sweat, his sweat smells like. And it doesn't smell like cherry blossoms. And he was smelling like cherry blossoms. He smelled like he had been around a female. Ms. West, I'm trying to, I'm, honestly, I, I think this is very similar to all I could envision was them having sex in our sacred place. Your Honor. It's starting to feel like that. Like, you are putting your own insecurities on this relationship. And because of those insecurities, I lost a very reliable, reliable client who was making a lot of progress, and she's here today. Hello, Ms. Davis. It's a pleasure. Thank you for joining us today. What's your relationship with the defendant? I'm paying him to be my fitness trainer, and his wife or girlfriend or whatever you want to call her by this time. Beyonce. Yeah, whatever. I don't know how she feel, but it's just wrong. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. I understand um, as a witness for the defense, Ms. Lauren Davis is here. Uh, Robert, will you please ask the witness to come in? Sure. Hello, Ms. Davis. It's a pleasure. Thank you for joining us today. What's your relationship with the defendant? I used to go on hiking trips with him. He was my workout partner. He was really great, very respectful. What interactions have you had with the defendant? Have you had any re interactions outside of professional hiking and or therapies? No, whatsoever. I seen him one time at a supermarket. I was there. I shop at the supermarket. I'm vegan. I don't eat meat. So I'm in there getting vegetables, getting grains, getting what I need to cook for my, di my dinner. And Sierra's there, of course, but she was standoffish and had a little attitude, but instead of her voicing whatever her problem was then, she just, you know, kept it at that and held her tongue. And, you know, that's not my problem. I, I was there doing what I do, my everyday journey. So, Ms. Davis, I just want to be real clear. You came here to say that you are not in a relationship outside of professional relationship yes. with Mr. Ellis, correct? I'm not in a relationship, don't have no dealings, never have had any dealings, and don't feel like that type of way towards her man. She can have her man. I don't want her man. And have you discontinued your sessions with the defendant? Um, yes, because it's just too much drama. Like, how are you have a business and a company, but your insecurities allow, you know, to get in the way of your money? Like, I'm paying him to train me, to take me on trails, to be my fitness trainer, and his wife or girlfriend or whatever you want to call her by this time. Beyonce. Yeah, whatever. It's like, you know, very just over the top, insecure, and just feel like 
I don't know how she feel, but it's just wrong. Cause... Has she confronted you before? No, she's never... She called my phone a few times and, like, asked me was I sleeping with him, but, Whoa. you know, I'm very pretty, so I get this a lot. Um, I don't do drama. I don't do the people accusing me dealing with their man. I don't do none of that, because at the end of the day, it gets tiring, like... So I just hung up, you know? She figured out if, if, if anything, they need to have that discussion between them two. I'm just the client. And, Mr. Ellis, your point is that the sort of back and forth cost you this particular client. It cost me, and she's going to run off all my clients. How can I provide and continue making money if she's just going to go through my phone and not trust me? Thank you, Ms. Davis. I appreciate your time today. I think you have stated very eloquently what the issue is, and it's between the two of them. Yeah, it has nothing to do with me, you know. Absolutely. That's personally her problem. Like... Thank you so very much, Robert. Thank you. Ms. Ellis, I'm just thinking. I could hear in Ms. Davis's voice that Ms. Davis thinks a whole lot of herself. Well, whether or not that's merited, I don't know. But nothing in her testimony made me think that she was sleeping with your fiancé. Did you believe her at all? I want to believe her, but she has just been really rude to me. And... She don't like you. It's very clear. Yeah, she doesn't like that's me. The, I mean, let's live in the truth. She's not gonna be your friend, but guess what? She's not. She was your fiancé's client. If you were married to or engaged to a doctor and he had patients coming in and out, female patients, would you be insecure about the fact that he's seeing female patients? Or an Uber driver? Would you be insecure? And you know what? I can answer that for you. You would. Because you're not insecure about what they do. You're insecure about your relationship. And I think the reason you're insecure about your relationship is because you don't want to be here in the first place. You a Hawaii girl where you were in control. In Georgia, you got to share that control. And you have to determine whether or not this relationship is one where you can share control. Because Mr. Ellis has not shown me anything to say that he is stepping outside of his relationship. You do need to set correct boundaries with your female clients like any other professional does. But, Ms. West, if you want to save your relationship, you have to listen to what he is saying. I mean, you have to also work on yourself as an individual. Work on who Ms. West is, who Sierra is, what Sierra wants. Make yourself a whole woman so that you can bring your whole self to this relationship. This is a new place for you to live, and it may not be the place you want to live. This is a relationship that has evolved, and the evolution of that relationship may not be the way you want it to be. And by the way, that's 100% okay. But if he's who you want, then you're gonna have to find a way to compromise. Is this the man that you want to be with? I do want to be with him. I feel that we mirror each other in a lot of ways. I just need more communication. I just want you to be able to talk to me and not feel that I'm going to be putting too much pressure on you. And if you can do that for me, then I can make some changes for you. I feel that. And I can work on my own prioritization, mm -hmm. clarity. And it's not just you going through it. I have to adapt and change a lot. I just ask for a little space to be me, and I will always be with you. You are my greatest adventure. I want to make this work. Trust me, please. I love when I don't have to get a birdie. <laughs> Robert, it was very clear by the end of that case, mm -hmm. it was the plaintiff with the issue. Absolutely. I mean, I thought that she actually saw them. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I almost believed her because, let me tell you, if I took a female friend to my wife and I's favorite restaurant, she trusts me, but it's going to be a problem. Oh, so you're going to have some explaining to do. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, I think they can make it. Yeah. But I think she needs to be more secure in herself first. Yes. Yes.